Mm. Mm. Welcome back to the Gingy YouTube channel, everybody. Sorry, I haven't had lunch. If you look in the rear mirror, we got the car trailer attached to the Sequoia, which you know what that means. We're not picking up a car, but we are picking up something exciting. We got a hundred feet of inch and a half, 120 wall DOM. This will make up the cage, the chassis, and a lot of other stuff on the drift truck. This hundred feet of metal cost me a little over $1,400. Price of metal is going up and my smile is going down. But if you want to support the channel, you can check out the merch. Anyway, today, you know what? Let's not even just talk about it. Let's get these, let's get these suckers off. Sick. Really cleaner than the plasma cutter, but way more rougher. tell that was miserable because it was but done frame rails at least the front of the frame rails clean just got this package it's a little I don't know what you'd call it pipe mm -hmm. disconnect okay I think you could call it a coupler yeah a little coupler this will allow me to build the cage in a way that I can still separate the cab from the frame so look they come together and one end fits perfectly in the pipe. So this will allow the bars to be bolted and unbolted while still retaining their full strength. So it's pretty sick and um, pretty cheap off eBay too. So that's a dub. So before we can start putting tubes here, filling this nice empty space, we have to know where the tubes have to go. And in order to do that, we come over to this here 240 and we're going to build a jig off of the chassis to locate all the suspension points. The suspension is still in the car, so what we have to do now is remove that. See the subframe, control arms, suspension, steering rack, the whole front, front cross member and suspension are out of the car. So the jig we're gonna build, it's going to be a piece of metal that bolts the, to the top hat location, to the two subframe studs, and to the one trailing arm bolt hole. With those three mounts on both sides, one piece of metal, we can then transfer that piece of metal to the truck, get it perfectly in the right place, weld it to the truck, and build a chassis around it. Same thing we did to the Rally Miata. Similar thing that we did to the, the, the Mid-Engine Eclipse. Although that was a little different. Before we can start building this jig, I'm gonna clean up some things, make some room, get this somewhere for Hunter. This is the lazy way to get things out of the way. 
Because if you look, now nothing is getting in our way. <laughs> So we have all of the points connected, trailing arm, top hat, and the subframe. What we're gonna go ahead and do now is just keep bracing it, because obviously if we unbolted it right now, this part would flex a little bit, the middle would flex a little bit. We don't want these things moving even millimeters while we're building the chassis around it. So I've got more box tube, do some bracing, triangles, triangle, triangles, and then I have some, uh, some square bar. Commence the bracing.
we doing? We were finding the exact center of this wheel well, because that's part of the measurement we'll use to line the jig up in the drift truck. For one, we used a carpenter square, but this is obviously a little flimsy. So to double check it, we used a power cord for a Milwaukee fan with a cup and some weights on it to weigh it down. So we got it perfectly at 580.5 millimeters, so. So the jig itself is done, and for my previous builds, this is where I would have stopped. I would have taken out the jig and started putting it into the new chassis. However, I've learned from those builds. If you can build a reference from the jig that will line up to something on the new chassis to get it in the right spot, it'll save you a lot of time. And so that's why we measured the center of the wheel well. Because if we line the jig up from the center of this wheel well, the center of the truck's wheel well, and then make sure obviously the height from the subframe, the frame rail is all right, and all that is all good, then boom, we have the position of the jig. The problem is that in order to build something that comes up to this mark and make sure that it's accurate when we put it into the new chassis, it has to be perfectly perpendicular up. O only way we can do that is either using carpenter squares and such, or by using a level if the car was level. We can't use carpenter squares because of all these bars we've already put there, and the car's not level. So now we have to level the car on some drag stands. This entire outer bar is perfectly perpendicular vertically and in and out. So pretty much no matter where the truck's fender ends up in this area, this will always be accurate to the center of the, the 240 fender. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, but I'm not gonna film that because it's a pain in the butt. So this side is all done, and now we can remove the jig from the S13. All of our points are a part of the jig. Glory, much stiffer than any of the other jigs I made. I mean, obviously it's got a little bit of flex in it, but that's because it has to be a U, you know? So it's just eyeballed in here. Obviously, I don't know if this is even close of where it's gonna go, but I think it's about right. Things I notice, mounting point for the trailing arm, the width of it is also perfect. It sits just outside the frame rails. So that's kind of funny. These frame rails are skinnier than the 240s frame rails. These things are very high and quite far back towards the firewall. I actually, I think it's more that the firewall sits pretty far forward on this, on the, on the truck. So the next thing that we're gonna do, get it in the right spot, get it perfectly square in the chassis, exactly where we want, level, all those things, and then weld it in. Oh, 
Boltsandnuts.com, ladies and gentlemen. Use code GINGIM to get 10% off. So we got the truck off the lift, rolled forward into this open area, and on jack stands nice, perfectly level in all three dimensions. Got the fenders put back on. Now we can start working on getting the jig put into the right place. First step, find the center of the fenders like we did on the 240, and then kind of work backwards from that. So we got the jig kind of uh, placed up with the fenders on, and it's in about the right location. It's not exact yet, we were just eyeballing it. But we did measure the height of the jig compared to the bottom of the frame rail, and comparing that to the 240, it's 28 millimeters too small. So really, this jig has to go up 28 millimeters. And unfortunately, it is touching the frame right now. So what that means is that we're gonna have to start notching the frame just a little bit, it's 28 millimeters, just to get the jig to sit at the right height compared to the rest of the, the chassis. The jig is now officially in, welded to the frame in four different spots. Everything is where it should be and it, it doesn't flex enough where it's actually gonna move, like bend or anything like that. So now we can go ahead and start building the chassis. By that I mean the strut towers that will actually come up to where these are, are mounted, front brackets that will mount the trailing arms, subframe mounts, and then the cage, the rear suspension stuff. I'd love to get started on the tube work, but it's Christmas week. I'm driving back to Illinois later this week to visit friends and family, and uh, I just don't have time to keep working on this thing. Thank you for everyone who watched the last video and commented. Thank you to everyone who bought some merch. I appreciate that. If you guys are interested in that, you can click up there, or there will be a link in the description down below. Enjoy your holiday, everyone. It probably already happened at this point if you're watching it on YouTube, but patrons, enjoy your holiday. If you're watching it on YouTube, have a bad holiday. <laughs> I'll see you guys when I get back later. You know what's gonna happen when you do that, right? You're, you're gonna try to turn, and then you're, and you're gonna go. Creepy. Creepy. No, that would look baller though. Um, the wheels are too small now. That's why. I think the wheels look fine. I just think that not for a drift car. Like you're not gonna be able to slide that. <laughs>